Hey, hey, Vipers videos coming back after a bit of a hiatus. Uh, I think the last time I did anything, uh, I think it was the Easter egg hunt where I was hunting down these poor old uh, colored eggs that uh, <laughs> weren't really edible. I think that was uh, two, three months ago. But uh, I'm back in the barn and this may not look like the same barn that I've been in in the past, but actually it is. It's uh, what I've done during the hiatus is actually got cleaned it up. Finished putting all the wall board up like I said I was going to and uh, my wife wanted a gym so I uh, built her a gym out here. Well, I'm sorry about the fan. It's uh, We've had some really hot, humid weather the last couple months so I got at least a fan on so I don't sweat to death out here. But yeah, so here's the gym, and here's the old targets that I have been using, but I haven't used in, my God, months and months. So gave myself kind of a workshop out here too. But anyway, let's get back to what we're doing here. So today, out in the barn, I wanted to cover a new air gun that I recently picked up. Uh, the Diana Bandit in 177 caliber. Um, what was really interesting is when I uh, opened the box, this is kind of, sorry about the fan. This is how I found it, and I, I started to panic for a second because uh, Airbug, I, I'd never heard of Airbug, and um, I didn't see a full size uh, moderator on it as the bandit comes with. So before I even open, I just quickly thumbed through here and I thought, oh my gosh, I hope I didn't get the wrong item. So. Anyway, in opening this up, it's actually a really, really nice case. It's a little bit flimsy because the foam just sits in there, but uh, all in all, it's really nice. But then when I opened it up, here's, of course, what I, I found. There I found the correct bandit. So I'm not sure why they give you this air bug, which apparently looks to be a CO2 version, literally, of the same gun. I think they used to have, didn't they have a uh, Diana Chaser? Is that what it was called? I don't know. I'm not, not really up on it. I don't know a lot about the Diana products. So after I got myself all squared away and realized that this is actually the Bandit and that's the correct manual, then I was a little bit more relieved. Okay, I just had to take a quick break there and it's, it's almost impossible to get out of that foam uh, one-handed as the... Uh, the rear target sights and the front blade kind of catch on the way up. The uh, reason I got this was I had always wanted to get a uh, 177 PCP once I got involved. I think I started with a, a 25 and then worked down to 22 and then finally a 177. My experience in 177s obviously started with uh, pump up pellet pistols or pellet rifles like most of us and then I got into brake barrel and, and so on. And as I got more interested in PCPs, um, I really enjoy my uh, 25 caliber uh, Hudson ATP-1 uh, pistol, and of course my Y-Rock HW-44 uh, 22 caliber. And I, I wanted a 177, but I didn't want to spend a lot of money. Um, I don't do a lot with 177, but it was just kind of a nice idea. So I'd looked at uh, that gun from China or Russia, I can't remember which one it is, but it's, it's, I think it's like a PP700 and it's either called an Onyx or an Artemis or a Zalstar, so I, I can't remember. It's a real popular here on the forums and I kind of like that, but I didn't notice that the, the power rating was all that much greater than this, if at all. And I started having uh, difficulty finding one in 177. They were all on back order till like October. So I had looked at the Bandit for really off and on for over a year. And maybe I just didn't like the whole, you know, super target looking compared to just a more standard looking gun. But in any case, I'm, uh, after doing a little bit of research on the specs, which I'm not going to bore you with, it's, it's running in the, for the 177. Uh, about 725 uh, feet per second, maybe nine to nine and a half foot pounds. I'm going to test that out today and see where it's at. But uh, I was uh, pretty intrigued by it. And the other thing is, it's under $180. Very nicely finished. It, it's nice looking. There's no defects on it, uh, no scratches or dings. I was really happy to find that out. A lot of people uh, that I had seen their YouTube videos or on forums 
had talked a lot about poor build quality and dings and touched up this and that. I real oh mind, there's not a scuff or a scar or a mark other than dust and dirt on this gun anywhere. So I was really happy to see that. Um, the only complaint I had out of the box right away is I had noticed that the front sight was canted a little bit and it, it appears to be that me I don't know if that's I think that's a poly band it's like the only piece of poly on this thing really and just out of frustration I kind of just grabbed the thing and kind of just it back uh, tweaked it back but I mean it takes really strong pinching grip and but once I put it in place it was fine it comes with a nine shot magazine I think for uh, 177 and seven shots for 22 Another interesting thing coming up, it comes with a fill probe that actually has the male quick disconnect all machined as to one unit on the shaft, which was pretty cool. Then, something really interesting here, and I'll try to get on back to testing here, but I got this item right here. I know what it is now, but at the time I did not. And I'm looking at this thing and I'm thinking, oh my god, what's that? And I think, of course, I got that airbug manual, maybe it's something that came with the airbug. So anyway, I look in both manuals, there's nothing on it. So I kind of think about it a little, you know, just think for a second. I said, you know what, with threads inside of there, the depth of it, shoulder, that almost looks like a thread protector. And I thought to myself, yeah, but every place I read says that the Diana Bandit has a fixed moderator. So, but then again, you're thinking, okay, fixed, but I mean, how is that really on there? So, uh, because they had given that to me, Anywho, I thought to myself, well, what are the chances? Maybe it is not fixed on there. So I had started to unscrew it, and it unscrews here. It unscrews at this seam here. Um, and then, of course, the guts can all come out. But I thought to myself, well, what if I really, you know, put a little torque into it? And I thought, okay, the barrel's already, per you know, um, the barrel's already secured here. I made sure those were tight. And I wasn't going to use anything other than my hand strings. So I put on like a... Uh, uh, rubber work glove and I just kind of took and really torqued on here with a good grip and all of a sudden I could feel it breaking loose and as I worked it more and more I realized that it was uh, Loctited on but either they did just a poor job. Maybe there was oil on the threads But lo and behold with just a just a gentle at least from my hand strength perspective torque it kind of pretty much just unscrewed it came right off. So I'm like, wow, that's really interesting. So here is a modern, and of course there was all kinds of uh, fragments and chunks of Loctite that I've since cleaned up. And then I said, hey, look at that. What if that is a thread protector? So I'm not quite sure why. And if you all know, you can, you know, uh, leave a comment below why there is the confusion between some folks that say that it is not threaded or removable and some folks say that it is. In any case, it came off and it is removable for me and I have yet to see one video or review or anything where someone shared that they got this device, this item. So I would imagine it's probably very loud with, without the moderator so I'm going to go ahead and just use it with the moderator tape but the interesting thing is it does come off and it is uh, you can shoot it without the moderator on it so that looks like it's give, saving you about five inches from the uh, 20 inch overall length but so all right another thing that kind of troubled me which was again really minor but just saying is that the uh, fill port did not come with a, a, um, a plug to keep dust out so I realized you can buy something somewhere, but I turned around and found a piece of this Tigon or vinyl tubing. I inserted, I think it's probably a 3 16ths, maybe a quarter inch, uh, piece of uh, polycarbonate uh, that's like a glow neon. And I sanded it and, and polished it with some wax and oil, so it's real, but it's, it's bone dry, but it's real smooth. And it just is a nice friction fit right in there. And I just have to take anything like a ballpoint pen or something and push it out. But right now it's really it's keeping that clean. So it's not any big deal, but at least I just feel better about 
especially out in the barn if I'm outside and I set it down on our... So, um, I have not shot this yet. I don't know an awful lot about it other than it's just a you know standard PCP like anything else. I was just really excited to see a lot of the features, the nice uh, high quality target grip out of wood. It's My hand is probably just right on the large size of saddle, so it, it fits me just about perfect. It does appear to be um, ambidextrous, I, you know, but it is a, you know, if you can kind of just let the pistol, you know, get a nice high grip, let it rest in your hand. I suppose if your hand is a little bit smaller, uh, it's going to be more difficult, but it wouldn't take much to take the action out and, and sand this down and then refinish it. But I think they did a really nice job compared to pictures I'd seen. There almost appears to be some kind of, uh, one, not really stippling. Yeah, I guess it is. It sounds like the wood has been mechanically stippled, but, uh, and that gives a nice, uh, grip surface. And so anyway, I was, it, this turned out to be a lot better purchase just aesthetically and feeling than I thought. So as I alluded, a lot of people said the build quality wasn't that good, but I've yet to see anything on here that I, I don't find acceptable. It's got target sights, um, nice wood grip. Um, I didn't see any dings or nicks. Uh, it comes with a uh, single shot tray, or as I mentioned, a magazine. That was kind of neat. Um, they affix it with two magnets, one here and one there. And this is a nicely machined aluminum tray, which I thought was kind of nice. There's a lot of detail. So for a low dollar, probably considered budget, PCP pistol, you get a lot of higher quality features and details on this. So, I mean, for 180 bucks, you're getting a pretty powerful 177 caliber with a nice clean action uh, moderator made out of aluminum with nice al aluminum baffle innards. Uh, I mean, it just seems like a pretty, pretty neat package. So, I'm going to put it through its paces here and uh, I'll do some. Uh, chronograph testing and uh, oh you know what I'll tell you what let me do something else here let me show you just size wise what it's like okay so I brought out a couple of my other uh, pistols for comparison in size a lot of people want to know physically I really wanted to know I mean I until you really get it in your hands it's hard to uh, really conceptualize exactly what size it is in any case, uh, obviously the Diana Bandit. Here's my Y-Rock uh, HW44 22 caliber. They're literally all with, you know, uh, moderators attached. They're literally almost the same size. The Y-Rock, I think, is something like a half inch shorter, like if you were to really try to, you know, level these out. But uh, in any case, they're both really, really close. They feel very similar. And here's the good old, you know, American classic uh, Crossman 1377 that so many of us probably have but uh, here's a an idea actually surprisingly without the moderator they're 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 almost the exact same size gun which is interesting so it's really not as large a gun as, as the pistol as one might think it's just these moderators in order to work effectively have to be you know pretty long because they're not very big around so that's uh, to give you some size comparison to these uh, to these guns. They're literally the same. But uh, anyway, let's get started and see how she shoots. Okay, so now I'm going to get ready to uh, do some chronograph testing and uh, accuracy from the standpoint of I'm only my, my typical 10, 11 yards in here. It's not. Uh, a big test but it is it's brand new uh, out of the package uh, I did uh, strip it down a little bit and I cleaned the barrel just a basic field cleaning but it, it was a little dirty um, but I'm just going to do some 10 yards today and then find my way out to uh, uh, 25 40 maybe 50 yards uh, but right now I just want to play with it a little bit see how it uh, function shoots what, like I said, what the real chronograph readings are for uh, uh, RWS Hobby, uh, seven grain wad cutters, lead free, 5.25 grain H&N match green. And then I want to see what kind of power I can ring out of this thing. So I have some Barracuda Hunter H&N uh, 
10.49 grain hollow points so those should be some uh, hopefully some pretty powerful 177 pellets. I do have some 13 maybe even 14 grain uh, back in the house so that would be for another day. Let's just see how this goes and uh, like I said just 10 yards today, 11 yards, no biggie. So I'll just do the obligatory down by the targets. I'm going to see how it groups and while I'm grouping it I'll, I'll try to run the crony and see what we get. So that's how I'm going to work that. Okay, the uh, adventure continues. Um, I can kind of see now why, um, even though aesthetically I'm extremely pleased with this, it's, it's not, my unit is not nearly as um, aesthetically problematic as a lot of people have claimed theirs were. So again, but I can see mechanically how uh, people would be saying that this is more of a project gun. Um, Definitely it, it has some shortcomings. Um, the chamber is really rough. I'm not quite sure why. I look into that. The rear sight adjustability is there, but it's kind of a goofy setup where actually the tube that the rear sight is in is like threaded, so you have to loosen one side, pull or push the other, and then re-tighten them up. So it's just it's not quite a, uh, a standard setup. For some reason I'm having a really off day. So I'm just going to uh, shoot and calculate and then just show you folks the uh, aftermath of it because this is just not working out today. And I thought it was the magazine, but I don't. <laughs> if you follow me, it seems like I always have magazine problems, but uh, I don't think it's the magazine. I think it's what's ever going on in that chamber. And maybe the O-ring is too tight. I have no idea, but it, it, you really have to push in uh, super hard. Um, and maybe that'll change as I switch to the, the green match or the Barracuda Hunter, but uh, it, it's just not a real pleasant. I'll, I'll even show you here. Let me get this camera. Okay, so let me put it on safe. Okay. So as I pull back, see that there? I'm going to put that in the single shot tray. Nice and straight, no problems, right? So I'll take and even give it some nice leverage. And as soon as I get right to here, I mean, it just, it stops dead. But you can see it's as straight as an arrow. But as soon as I put um, some effort, I mean, real strong effort. So like right now, it's just kind of stuck in there. But if you kind of go really hard, you can do it. And maybe that's okay. But I'm, I'm hoping that that hardness is a really tight O-ring and not like a jagged, you know, chamber uh, breach end but uh, I guess I'll have to find out when I take it apart but that's kind of what I was dealing with the magazine it was really tough I really had to jam them in there so um, I'll get to the bottom of that and uh, it'll probably be I'll probably talk about it at the end of this video because this video will probably be a couple days now <laughs> of information all right okay so it's about an hour later and I'm calmed down I turned off the fan I had a chance to kind of crunch some numbers and uh, see what went right, what went wrong, and I didn't want you guys to leave this video thinking everything was a total disappointment. Um, things didn't go right. I'm sure you guys have had days like that, and I'm just going to keep the video and post it for what it's worth. But uh, basically, um, I had trouble with the chronograph uh, software, so that didn't work. So now you're, you can see my sloppy notes you're looking at, but at least I've got some valuable information if you want to see how my unit works. Um, I also obviously had some issues that I was kind of complaining about. Uh, pellet loading, I had trouble with the magazine, but it's when I say the magazine, I just mean loading from it. I still really believe that I've got a chamber issue I have to look at. I looked a little bit at it. I think there's some burrs on the chamber edge, and the O-ring is just like really tight. So if you're using wad cutters or uh, anything with a wider head on it, I think I'm just having some resistance right there along with the, the bird up edge so uh, but I'll get back to that in my uh, next video I'm, I'm sure I'll have this all squared away the second issue I had was grouping accuracy I'll show you this picture here and you'll notice in the picture that uh, 
depending on where I was resting the pistol, it was giving me different uh, sorts of grouping outcomes. Um, when I was resting it on the cylinder, it would be, give me the most open pattern. Uh, when I rested it on the little bit of wood uh, stock in front of the trigger guard, eh, it was still kind of open. For the hell of it, I just rested my forearms with nothing touching the pistol. And the group, as you can see in that far right picture, it really tightened right up. Um, one thing I noticed, uh, a lot of people may disagree with this, but after shooting a lot of different pellet pistols, this little Diana really has a bit of a bark. In other words, I can really feel uh, a bit of recoil and it almost seems like it's bouncing. So along with some flex I noticed in the barrel coming out of the receiver, even with the set screws tightened, it's still as a free floater, um, it's got a little bit of flex. Then if I'm resting it on the cylinder, I'm, I'm just not sure that that's just the most optimal way to fire it. And you can see by the groups. I mean, if I'm literally doing all the same thing with the sight picture, you know, and I have to believe my skill is at least average to above average, it, there's no way those groups should be like that. So I'm just feeling that the barrel isn't that stabilized. Um, and there, at least mine really has some, uh, some kick, a little bit of perceived recoil. And um, with that, I'm just finding that it, I would like to get that Storm Rider barrel band and see if that tightens things up. So obviously you can see by that right-handed picture that I was able to hold a really tight group, but that's with nothing touching the pistol at all. It's not, except for my hands, and I'm resting my forearms, which is a very stable platform, but of course so is resting the pistol on the uh, air cylinder. Um, but in any case, uh, the picture speaks for itself. I'll have to figure out what that's all about. Okay, the positive uh, outcome of this was, uh, if you take a look at, well, sorry about the sloppy notes, but the power of this 177 is way <laughs> higher than advertised. And I'm pretty excited about that. So, um, sorry about these sloppy notes, but I'll just ramble on through it. Um, with the RWS Hobby, um, basically, um, I was able to get, I got 16 shots out of it from 200 bar down to 140, but I believe you could probably squeak out a little more if you wanted to run it down, and I'm still way high. So the, the high uh, was 888, and this is for a 7 grain and the low was 780 so that's way over advertised so i don't know if they're sticking some heavy hunting pellets in it or if i just got one that's you know ported for power i have no idea but that means i'm kicking out an average of 835 feet per second and 10.8 foot pounds of energy well it's advertised at 9.5 so that's over you know foot pound more that, that's fairly substantial it's not a big deal but i didn't want a weaker gun so i'm real happy um, you can see also that there's quite a big standard deviation from 200 bar, I started at 780, and down at 140 bar, um, I ended up with uh, 792, but uh, right in the middle there, I guess shot number, whatever it was, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, shot 11 was 888, so I mean, my goodness, it's 100 and some deviation in, you know, 10 shots or so. But anyway, you could ring out 20 shots out of this, but yeah, it's going to be all over. So that might be part of the accuracy issue as well. Um, a lot of people like to regulate them. For what I'm doing, it'll be fine. Um, on the Barracuda Hunters, 10.49 grain. I averaged out at uh, 691 feet per second or 11.12 foot-pounds of energy. Oh my, that's really pretty powerful for what I expected. Um, I didn't run a lot through it, but, you know, so what do we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. At the same 200 bar, you know, by the time I got down to 150, we're looking at like 12 shots. Uh, here we've got eight. So it, it looks like it's less efficient with the heavier pellets. And um, then I went to the H&N Match Green 5.25 lead free. And um, I really started like 100, I just pumped it a couple times, started at 160 bar, 
Because it seems to be the sweet spot. The sweet spot seems to be between like 175 and 145, something like that, where you get you know, a little bit less of a deviation. But anyway, the H&N match green lightweight pellets, uh, 973 feet per second, 970 and 980, all in the 160 uh, bar range. So uh, averaged out, of course, 980 feet per second and 11.2 foot-pounds of energy with those little screaming I mean, there's some pellet rifles that, you know, only shoot that fast. So I'm pretty excited with the power. Um, again, I think it's a really uh, good gun for a really good pellet pistol for 180 bucks or less, actually. But I do believe it's going to need that uh, barrel band, uh, uh, the Diana Stormrider barrel band, which I'm going to get that on order tonight and I'm going to take it apart and see what the chamber looks like and clean that up and that will be coming up in my next video and maybe the next time I'm doing this it won't be such a hot day and uh, I just got a feeling everything will turn out a lot better in the next video so uh, check it out thank you